Welcome in to episode 10 of the Gym Podcast. Last week we talked about the importance of hard work, why hard work matters in society and why it matters for a young man. And we talked about God giving that as a gift, that it's it's actually very necessary. It goes back to the beginning. Yeah. It provides value to society, value to ourselves, boosts self-esteem, does all sorts of great things for us. But we left with a very important question, and that is, should you chase your dreams? And we said we would cover it this next week, <laughs> so here we are. Will, should you chase your dreams? Yeah, we kind of left everybody on a cliffhanger a little That's bit. Right. We were talking about how this is something that everybody's heard that phrase. It's something that everybody's probably got an opinion on. So, hey, let, let's let's tackle it in the episode. And then we got to recording and we're like, this will be really cool to kind of leave them on the edge here as far as this question. But that's how we're, we're so, before I answer, we're going to start with this. And then we're going to get into a little bit more from the previous episode about practically speaking. That's right. What? How do I work hard? Like, what are some things I need to be doing to to get in the habit of working hard? Because last week was theoretical. Yeah, you know, we we recognize that. And there's a lot of people who I young young men that is who I'll sympathize with you because I would say hard work is not necessarily something that just you you just come by naturally. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, maybe to some extent sure. you kind of have a, a a willpower or a diligence that you want to get things done. But a lot of work ethic and and learning how to work hard is being taught how. Mm. And so I recognize there's a lot of young men out there who maybe you've never been taught. And so when you hear us talk about how, hey, we really need to work hard and it's really important, we're not trying to, to, you know, bash you and be overly harsh if you don't. You know, obviously if it's something where you can and you're simply not, that is a problem. But if it's something where it's like, look, I don't know how to. Right. Number one, we understand. And number two, that's what this episode's for. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But let me go back to the question. Should you chase your dreams? Because we talked about in the last episode as we wrapped it up about how there's guys out there. Tim Tebow is one that we we brought up. Yep. Other people who, who will make a big deal about, hey – chase your dreams do what you you can be anything you want to be go after it man sacrifice this and sacrifice that so that you can live your dream it's a big disney thing as well i think you brought up last episode i disagree i'm not a big fan of of chase your dreams culture now let me give all the qualifiers that i need to (laughs) it's okay to have have a dream it's okay to to maybe have a goal in mind that you can that you aspire to um, specifically, maybe it's a certain job that you're like, man, I really want to, I, I want to get that job. I think there's a difference in having a, a job or a goal in mind and doing everything you can to work for, maybe you want to be a lawyer, work, a medical surgeon, do everything you can to work for that yeah. as opposed to, I've got this dream of, I want to be a, a, a pro athlete, a, a YouTube star, a fill in the blank. So I'm going to basically push off everything else in my life until I can make sure I've exhausted that to try to chase that dream. I think those are two different things. And yep, even I with agree. the law, your doctor thing, if it's just not happening, a, you, you don't have the brains for it, You don't, it's just not working out and you continue to pursue it and you continue to push things off. I think that's a problem because again, you'll see people who will push off marriage. They'll push off having kids. They'll push off important family life things because they're quote unquote chasing their dream. And the biggest thing about it and why I always say I'm not a fan of it is because it's called a dream for a reason. Dreams are called dreams because they're not based in reality. And when you constantly are telling yourself that you need to go chase your dream, you're telling yourself to chase something that's not really a reality. Does it mean you're, you're never going to achieve something you set out to accomplish? Of course not. In fact, I hope you do. But everybody who dreams about being a, a, a pro athlete, everybody dreams about being a, a, a American Idol contestant, everybody dreams about being yeah. a star actor. How many people achieve that? It's something that gotta be. It's gotta be based in reality. What do you have to add to that? Again, this might sound harsh. This might sound like, are you kidding me? These guys are saying you shouldn't chase your dream. That's kind of that is kind of what I'm saying, to be <laughs> honest. Um, if your dream is based in reality, sure. If, yeah. if it's based in reality, if your dream is. If there's one way to ch- achieve your dream, and if you don't achieve it, then uh, you're you're broke, you're destitute, and you know you're having to push everything off. That's not really a good dream. And I would say there's a lot of pro athletes. Look, if you're not, if by 14 you're not really being scouted, if by 14 people aren't, you're you out know, of luck. Yeah, 12, 13, 14 years old, you're probably not making the pros. Just letting you know. I told everybody last week uh, that I played with some some hockey players that ended up uh, making the NHL, which very good for them. That's great. Yeah, I played with way more who in their pursuit of trying to make the NHL, ended up playing minor league hockey into 21, 22, 23 years old. Nobody makes the NHL at 24. I'm sorry. Yeah. You don't make most, I mean, maybe baseball with pitchers or something come out late. 
Most people at 24 aren't making it, and so they come back home. They don't have a college education. They don't have any work, real work experience. They they barely barely they've been have, playing hockey for four right, years. Right, they barely yeah. have a high school diploma. Like, they've been traveling the nation. Good for them. That's great. They got to chase their dream. And where did they get them? Yeah, exactly. Because you're making 30, 30 grand a year playing hockey trying to make the NHL. So that hurts way more than it helps. And, and good for them for those that made it. We're talking about grounding ourselves in reality. We're supposed yeah. to be serious men. We're, be taken seriously. Part of the not giving up your dream, so to speak, but being willing to recognize, is my dream based in reality and is it going anywhere? So no, I'm with you. I can't uh, honestly well, put the put the stamp of approval on go chase your dreams at all costs. Well, I always go back to what am I going to teach my kids? Mm. And I'm not going to teach my kids to chase their dreams. Right. Again, just say it out loud. Chase your dream. It's a dream. It's a fantasy. It's a rea- it's it's not based in reality. Right. Um, now, am I going to teach my kids to just settle for the lowest paying job they possibly can? Of course not. I want them to push. We had a we had a our second episode was about setting goals for yourself yeah. and actually striving to reach those. We're not talking about just settling for for basic things not setting and, goals. and not right. setting goals. What we're talking about is, again, these lofty, not based in reality. Fantastical, that's that's the best yeah. way to put it. Is is it based in reality? And if you set down the pathway again to becoming a high powered lawyer or a surgeon or whatever, a, a, a forensics analysis or a analyst, forensics analyst, or something like that, you fill in the blank. You're going down that path and it's just not working out. Have the self awareness to be like, look, I can't keep delaying my right. life to chase this dream. Right. That's all we're saying. Um, it sounds so harsh. It does. It really it does. does. It yeah. sounds so harsh. And we're, I know we're probably going to get pushback on this. Of you're really telling kids not to. We're telling kids to achieve greatly. We're just saying once again not to beat that dead horse. But that's so important that it be based on reality. Well, why isn't it? Why can't it be a reality? You know how many people want to be chefs in the world? <laughs> how many people are going to be Gordon Ramsay? Uh, and yet, how many actually are? Again, events? movie stars, famous musicians. There's everybody so wants to many. be those things. There's a tiny fraction of, of those people on the planet. Right. And while that's happening, they're having to automate McDonald's because nobody wants to work. They're having to automate. Not that I'm saying you should pursue that as your highest goal. But sure. they're having to automate so many things because jobs can't get filled because everybody's too busy chasing the dream of being a photographer, being a chef, being a movie star, being a YouTube star. Nothing that's really based in reality and nothing that really helps society all that much. I hate to say it, but when you really think about it, actors and actresses don't help society all that much. Sure, entertainment has its value and everything else. We can get into that. That's a different discussion, but and we it's not that we have to do everything for society, but it goes back to our last one. Hard work really is about the value we bring. Well, that's what I want to get in. That's, that's what we're going to do for the remainder of this episode. We talked last week about all the reasons why hard work is so important. And we talked about how it's important because it's been here since the dawn of creation. Right. It's important because God... From before a woman was even created, he expected man to work. Yep. We talked about how hard work really helps you grow up. We yep. talked about how because you as a godly young man are one day hopefully going to be the leader, both obviously spiritually of your family, but also physically, you're going to be responsible for putting food on the table and making sure that your family is provided for. That's a really big deal. Uh, what are the other ones? We talked about how it ad- you just talked about it. it adds value to society. All these reasons why hard work is important. Those are all a little theoretical. What we want to do with this episode is, okay, how does that apply to you? How does that apply to me? If I'm a 15, 16 year old, what what tangibly, practically do we need to do? So I'll let you kind of get sure. into the first. We got a few here that we want to talk about as far as, okay, yes, I know hard work's important. What do I do now? Yeah. Get a job, first and foremost. <laughs> That'd get, be the first thing. Yeah. Get a job. And you might say, well, my parents don't let me. I get it. There's some caveats there sure. as to whether you can or cannot. But if you're 16 years old, See, I think Chick Fil A hires at sixteen, right? They don't work on Sundays. Um, there's jobs you can go pursue, but I, the the idea of you growing up as a man, it really helps. And you can always tell. You and I were talking off air. You can always tell who's been working for a while and who hasn't. We talked about it in the last episode of being taken seriously, being being somebody that kind of takes himself seriously and that matures is somebody who's had a job for a little longer. Sure. But if you wait until the last possible second to actually start being responsible. Uh, hey, my parents are going to cover everything. It's fine. Yeah. Um, are you really growing up? Are you really pursuing greatness? Are you striving for greatness? I would say the first thing that can happen is if you get a job, that's going to help you grow up faster than anything. That's going to help yeah. you see the value of hard work. I've seen personally guys that all throughout, all throughout high school, not they don't have a job. And there are parents that said, no, I want you to focus on school. I don't want you to have a job. That's your parents' prerogative. So we're not trying to, you know, we're not trying to outrank your parents here. However, I've seen guys who they don't get a job all throughout high school. So here they are graduating at 18, never had a job. 
they're going to college and you say, hey, you're going to, you know, you get, a, you kind of have a lot of free time in college. Let's be real here. And so you ask them, are you going to get a job in college? And, and they're kind of like, well, well, really need to focus on my studies and I've got the social clubs and so I'm probably not going to have the time. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later on. All of a sudden we got guys at 22 that are having their first job. To me, that just blows yep. my mind. Yep. And it's something that, again, like you said, you can tell the guys that at 22 have had their, their, their first job took place when they were in their 20s. And so that's the first thing we, we would encourage you to do. Regardless, if you're, again, especially if you're on the younger end, if your parents allow, look into getting a job. My first job where I got a paycheck every month, I actually was working for my dad doing some some shipping stuff, you know, kind of some just minute, meticulous things that he didn't really have time to do, needed somebody to do, and I said, I'll do it. And you know what happened as soon as I started making that money? I wanted to find out, okay, well, this is great. How do I how do I make more money? What what else can I do? Yep. What else can I do to, or what other jobs can I find? You know what I mean? And so my next job after that was uh, I took on more advanced roles there, but then I went to work for UPS, and it was great. It was like, man, this is so cool. But the reason for that was because you developed that really thirsting for not just making money. I don't want to make it all about making money, but again, about accomplishing yep. things. If you wait and push that off and don't get a job till you're in your 20s, you don't develop that until later on in life versus if you start at 14, 15, 16, it really sets you up so much better. And the idea of getting a job, it's really, it's it's not about always the opportunity. It's about creating opportunity. Yeah. I was mowing lawns at 15, 16 years old. My parents would have to drive me places. I'd stick it in the back of a uh, of a trailer that they happened to have. And they let me, they were very nice to do that. And it was just a push mower. Yeah. And I'd go mow lawns. And I made like 1200 bucks in the summer. No fancy thought, zero turn, huh? Just to yeah, push mower. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. I Exactly. If I took all of my earnings, I'd be about, I don't know, like 3000 short. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was great to go work outside and, and to do that. And what you realize is there's more opportunity. Hey, this guy says, can you do a little landscaping? Which I got fleeced on. Um, <laughs> yeah. I still remember the guy. Still remember exactly where his house was. And... Well, for 75 bucks, you know, if you can remove these bushes, it would have cost him like 500 bucks to have a company do it. But I'm a dumb kid. Like you got it for bucks, 75. Boom, my yeah. eyes exploded. This is incredible. My dad ended up having no, my dad's a saint. It was great. But bonding experience between us, either way, opportunity begets opportunity. When yeah. you're looking for it, you go, well, I can't, I can't get to Chick-fil-A. I can't do this. I can't do that. I've, I've just got too much going on. I've got on. too much going on. Yeah. You'll always have too much going on. Yeah. If you look and, and create your own opportunity. It's kind of, I think it was Thomas Jefferson. I find the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. I, think was, I think it was him that said that. It's been attributed to a few different. Getting the job is about pursuing, making money, but pursuing yeah. the responsibility of a job, however you might find it. The other thing it really helps with is, is figuring out how to balance your time. That's something that I think me and you both feel like we still need to do better at, I'm but also we've come a long way in the last several years. Again, I talked about how if you're in college, you kind of have a lot of free time on your hands. You, you figure out a, a ways to fill your time. And if you get a job early on while you're still having to do school and you're still having to do maybe household responsibilities and you kind of master the ability to, okay, from the, from, for these hours, I, I have to get this done and I got to get this done by this day. And you can really get good at that. Again, yep. I hate to keep beating this dead horse, but it's going to set you up so much oh, better time. than if you're, you know, going to four classes a week in college and you got all these social clubs and you just say, I don't really don't have enough time. You got plenty of time. Okay. That that's the time thing. is rarely you got so much time you got to figure out how to balance it that's and so right. incorporating what because trust me when you have a family and you're married it gets even harder to figure out how to balance that time between your wife and your kids oh, and obviously yeah. your job and and your hobbies and entertainment and things that you want to enjoy and so man getting a job at an early age again especially when you're still in school and and you've got other maybe extracurricular activities it helps you balance that time and it gets you into right. the habit and that's really big too get us into the second one though because yeah. this is something that you were really passionate about us discussing with this episode so kind of go into it understand number two understand the economic value of certain jobs and why certain people make more money than you um and make more money than others this is that sounds dumb like why am i needing to know this because i can't tell you how many people i hear you know they only pay me 13 dollars an hour it's just ridiculous why would i even show up for 13 dollars an hour you know if i have if my buddy asked me to go fishing all of a sudden i can not show up to work because there I'm only getting paid I'm only, yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm only getting paid minimum wage at ten fifty an hour to eleven bucks an hour. Did you take the job at thirteen dollars <laughs> an hour? Did you agree to thirteen? Did you agree to thirteen dollars an hour? Please recognize that flipping burgers isn't worth thirty dollars an hour. So for those that want to raise the minimum wage and say, well, everybody at McDonald's should be making fifteen. Great, my cheeseburger just jumped to twenty dollars. Yeah, thanks guys, because now we have to pay for every. Some jobs aren't worth that. Okay, correct. Please understand the economic value that you bring. 
You know, if you work really hard at flipping burgers when you're making 13 bucks an hour, guess what? You're going to get promoted. You're yeah. going to make a little more when you're working cashier. You're going to make a little more when you're working, you know, managerial when, when you're positions, managerial, yeah. you're assistant manager, you're manager. Next thing you know, you're owning your own franchise. Yeah. That happens. Why? Because you started taking the little things seriously. He who's faithful in little will be faithful in much. Right. And for those that look at it and go from an economic value, well, I don't know why I would even try. All these kids, and I, I'm sure you could go off on this, the kids <laughs> that everything is more important than their job. They agree to the job. And then their buddy wants to do this, and they go, "Oh, I'm, <coughs> you know, I'm sick. Yeah. Sorry, boss, I can't come in today." And that's how you end up. We had a buddy who was a manager of Wendy's. He literally worked ninety hour weeks because he had so many kids. Yep, that would call off. He was going in at all because I it was just ridiculous. He was getting there at like four a.m. to really prep everything because kids wouldn't show up, and he'd leave at like midnight. That's insane. It was unbelievable. Um, the sad thing for me is I worked when I worked at Amazon. It wasn't kids that were doing that. It was. 20 and 30 year olds that that was kind of their attitude and their mindset, horrible. but it's one of those things that they justify it, but I'm only getting 13 bucks an hour. This ain't right. that big a deal. And so I actually, I remember I had a conversation with somebody. This one was a, a younger person, I think uh, probably 18 or 19. And they were trying to make the argument for why the minimum wage should be raised. And the argument was basically, well, because we work just as hard as XYZ who does make 15 an hour or does make 20 an hour or whatever. And so be, if we're both working hard, shouldn't we, you know, kind of make the same amount of money? And it was one of those things that it reminded me of what we talked about. I don't remember which episode it was. Maybe set your, maybe set goals for yourself about, about, um, try your best culture yeah. about yeah. how everybody thinks that, Oh, if I just try my best, then that's all, you know, I'll win. I'll try my, that if I try my best, I'll win. That's not how it works. That's not how life works. It's the same thing with that. Just because you work just as hard as the assistant manager does, you theoretically may work just as hard. It doesn't mean that those jobs are worth the right. same. And so right. I think the epitome of this point, if you're kind of getting confused, is understand your value. Right. Understand your job's value. Not every job's worth 50 an hour. You know, there's people that make a lot of money and it, it doesn't necessarily come down to, well, because you think you deserve it right. or because you you we work just as hard. So shouldn't we? No, you shouldn't. And be diligent at every level. If yeah, you, that's the key. Be Be honest. You know, be be diligent and be consistent. Show up. Um, you know, we're about to get in. This is kind of transitioning into the third one. Yeah, go ahead and transition us yeah, into the it. The third yeah. one is don't call out. Don't call out. We've already talked about be it. Be dependable. Be dependable. Exactly. Be consistent. Be dependable. Be diligent. Be ready to learn about how to be better. And these two points blend together a little bit because no matter if you're making eight bucks an hour or making five hundred dollars an hour, Hard work shouldn't shouldn't change because you're working heartily unto the Lord, as Correct. we looked at in Colossians three last week. Doesn't matter what you're making, and if you took the job at eight dollars an hour, it doesn't mean well I, I'm going to give them eight dollars an hour worth of work. No, you work diligent at eight dollars an hour, and you'll move your way up. Part of that is not calling out. Part of that is being the dependable guy. That when somebody is, you're not going to be the guy that the boss has to come in and work ninety hour weeks because you're going. Ah. It's just not that important. Yeah. It is important because this is more than just about the money and the paycheck you're making. It's about the type of person you are. It is amazing to me how the the young people that, that truly have a really good work ethic and they have good attitudes, how much they separate from the yes. rest of the, the from the people that don't. Yep. It's one of those things where you would think, okay, it's not that big of a gap or not that big. No, it differentiates you. It sets you so far apart yep. when you go into a job, regardless of what it is. And again, you're dependable. You don't call out, uh, which again, should be basic. Not calling out should be basic. It's not anymore. Uh, but you don't call out. You're dependable. You're reliable. You have a good attitude. You work well with others. Again, those are things that should be surface base level, but it sets you so far yeah. apart. And it is one of those things that it creates opportunities. It really does. If you're the guy that the, the manager and the boss knows we're going to have a really busy day this day and he's not going to call out. He's right. going to be there. He's going to be there working hard. He's going to be there being reliable. All these things be that person. And the nice thing about that is that is 100% in your control. That's right. You get to determine how diligent you're going to be in your work. You get to determine how reliable you're going to be. You get to determine what kind of work ethic you're going to have. You cannot pin that on anybody else. That is something that again, it's cool to think about, because it's all going to be on you. You yeah. get to decide how diligent you're going to be. And when you're the young guy and you, the only thing you have going on at night is video games, you stay extra, man. You make that, make that a little extra Put in that while, work. Yeah. While you're doing overtime. Because how good does that look when everybody around you is leaving the manager, but you're there and you're doing overtime. You're putting in the work and it's like, oh, I got to get home. Why do you got to get home? If you genuinely do, if it's for church, if it's for, you know, you made a commitment, whatever it is, that's fine. I get that. 
But if it's, I just can't wait to get home to play video games. Therefore, I can't take two extra I gotta hours. I got to watch the next season of Stranger Things. Exactly. Yeah. No wonder why you're not moving up. No wonder why. If we want to move up, we want to be well, diligent, And that's right? the thing. I promise, and I don't make promises. I promise you will, opportunities will show up. You will set Absolutely. yourself apart. Absolutely. Because there are so many people who, that's it. Clock out. Clock in. I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm not going to try. Because who are they going to call when they need us, when they need somebody? They're yep. going to call you. And it's going to be amazing. And guess who makes the money? When you get called in, it's like, hey, you get time and a half. And when you get called in and you show up, they go, this guy's great. Hey, you're bumped up. You're shift lead. And then when you get called into that and you show up and you're diligent, you slowly find your way working yourself into owning a franchise, making a ton of money. And how did it start? You showed up and you didn't call out. Yep. When that's you were exactly making it. 13 bucks an hour. Man, that's so cool. And you get to relish it. Get us into the fourth one. That's the, Yeah. Again, kind of all linked together. Appreciate the grind. Yep. So often I can be very guilty of this, of wanting to jump to the end, jump to the conclusion of I've got this goal in mind. I really want to get to the end of the goal. And so you don't really appreciate the process. That's something that when you're working a job or you have something that you're working for, you're striving for, you have to appreciate or really relish the grind of it. Yeah. You know, the we're, we're talking about the fact that, hey, opportunities are going to open and you're going to get to this point where you're going to, more things are going to happen. You still got to show up to work every single day. And that, right. those days can be long. Those days can be tough. You're going to have nights where you don't sleep very much and you're going to have times where, and again, especially once you get out of high school, oh, you know, yeah. you're talking establishing your career. You're going to have times where it's like, this is a, an absolute grind, but appreciate it because yeah. there is a goal worth striving for at the end. You can't jump to it. You can't skip steps. We talked about that last week yeah. about kind of trying to take the shortcut or kind of beat Get the system. Yep. Appreciate the grind. Appreciate yeah. the process of every day I'm going to work this hard because I know it's leading me somewhere. I'm not just on an endless work treadmill. That's it's right. leading me somewhere. Because imagine how good it feels when your head hits the pillow at night and you look back, you look at yourself in the mirror. That's, that's who we're talking about. That's what this whole podcast is about. You look yourself in the mirror. What do you see? Are you proud of him? Are you glad of the work that he did that day? And there's, yeah, it gets real toxic is the word. It, it can get real bad when you set that expectation so high that you never meet him and you're, you're, you know, you're always mad at yourself. We're not saying that. That's not good. That's, that's a workaholism, right? I'm never right. enough. We're talking about you do a hard day's work. You look at yourself in the mirror and go, man, I did that. I yep. conquered. I did amazing work today. I learned something new. I pushed. I, I, I stayed up a little bit later than I usually would to, to finish this project, and it feels great. Yep. And it's not even if you get a job. Do this in school. If you're not doing it in school, you're probably not going to do it in job. So maybe you don't have the opportunity. Maybe you're a younger watcher, younger listener, and, and you're hearing this going, well, I don't have a job. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your job right now is to pursue greatness in school. Yep. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're learning as much as possible, and you're putting in the, the the effort and appreciating the grind along the way because that's what makes us men yep. is we are reliable. We're, again, going back, these all come together. We're the guy who's going to show up and he's going to show out, man. He's going to do an amazing job because that's who we are. We're, we're men and we're gentlemen, right? The Godly Young Men podcast, we want to be the guys that when when everything goes, you know, goes south, they call us. Yep. Because we're the best, we're best, dependable, right? Reliable. We're we're dependable. We're the guy who moves up. We're the guy who learns new skills. We're the guy who looks for a way to to grow in every area of life because we appreciate what we do. Yep. And it's a beautiful thing to work really hard. And I can't tell you how good. I know you're the same way. When you're good at something, and and you get to provide that, I don't need to brag about it. When you're good at something, I know it. I yeah. know it, and it feels real good when I go to bed at night. When I have a great therapy day and things went really well and, and my clients were helped, man, I feel like a million yep. bucks because it's like I did my job well. Yep. They're paying me for that. They're paying me good money. I feel like I genuinely helped them along their path toward mental health. And it feels great, and I'm sure the same for you. So learn to appreciate and relish the grind. Are these days long? Yeah, they can be long. Are they tiring? Yeah. That's great. He's getting me amped up. This, this, is, this is great, is like man. I love talk, being man. men. I love I love getting to, to say – Wow, we did this. Yeah. And when I sit down and I watch Stranger Things all day or whatever it is, <laughs> uh, you know, when I Netflix binge and I used to do this with my wife on Saturdays before we had kids and I'd spend all day Saturday. That was your and TV feel, day. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like garbage on, on Saturday night and on Sunday and I'd waste my entire weekend because I couldn't wait to get to the weekend because we're no. When I learned to embrace, my dad always said, we can't always love or we can't always do what we love, learn to love what you do. And my dad was a plumber who was a who fixed sewers for a living. And he was the best backhoe operator in Denver. Why? Because he lo learned to love what he did. And he, he inbred that in me. And it's like, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to learn to love it. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to stand out. And I'm going to be somebody that is dependable, reliable, 
that's accessible, that is is everything that my boss needs me to be. And guess what? I'm my own boss now. And yeah. I love it. It's so man, what a great way to wrap. We're probably yeah. gonna let that be the the end here because it's one of those things where it's so amazing to think about the fact that once again, not to say not to beat this dead horse, it's all within our own control. It's one of those things strive for the, our episode one was strive for greatness. Episode two was set goals for yourself. Episode three was how to step up in a relationship with God. All these things that you have control over. Yep. You don't have to wait for somebody else. You don't have to be dependent on, on other people. You get to decide these things. And so that's really to sum it up. What all these podcasts are about, but specifically this one is set these goals for yourself and, and aim for the aim for these things and put the work in to go that's do right. them. Whether it is your relationship with God and 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 improving your areas there, we had our what was our episode two weeks ago about uh, stepping up in church, worship etiquette, things that you can do uh, to improve there. Do those things. Uh, we talked about confidence versus arrogance. We talked about saying the hard things. All these things that we're telling you, go out and do. Culture has lowered the bar so much for you as young men, which is why we started this podcast. Yeah. Culture is telling you the bar is all the way down here. Just kind of barely step over it. You're good. No. That's be right. better. Strive for more. That's the point with all of That's this. Right. And so to sum up these last two episodes, there's two weeks worth about hard work, work hard. I mean, that's really the best way to put it. it. Like you said, enjoy it. Relish the grind. Be the person who's dependable. Be the person who's reliable because it will set you apart. And as a man, you will have, you will have dominion. You will, you will right. feel as though you conquered, as though you that's accomplished right. something, and that will help you sleep at night. This has been a really good, really good episode. It's something that I hope everybody is is learning and appreciating. Um, we had the the question from last week about chasing your dreams. Maybe you disagree with us. That's not something that is necessarily we're tied down to, I guess. Sure. I mean, that's that's what we think. But There's if, nuance to that discussion. There is. It's not all black and white there. If you're somebody who thinks you should chase your dreams, let us know why. Uh, comment. But if you if we left out anything as far as well, how does how does work working hard apply to me? How mm. does it apply to you? How does it? Uh, maybe you found something in your uh, maybe you're on the older end and you remember something from your younger days that you think might help some younger people. Comment that as well. We're always looking for feedback. Right. But um, we're gonna in the next. It's either gonna be next episode or the episode after that. We're gonna talk about how to study the Bible. Mm. And this this is another one of those things that once again you have control over and you right. can work hard and you can be diligent about that. But stay tuned for that. How to study the Bible. I think that was actually a listener request. Somebody asked, hey, can you do an episode about how to practically study the Bible? So we'll do that here in the coming weeks. But Joe, anything to add? You you wrapped us up so beautifully and then I just right. talked for another five minutes. So I <laughs> You're apologize. You're all good. You're all good. No, 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 I think that's that's all I got to say. I mean, I got plenty more to say on it, but I won't <laughs> at this time. Well, we very much appreciate you joining us for episode 10 of the Godly Young Men podcast.